There are some materials called resists that are sensitive to X-rays. This means that when they are hit by X-rays, the molecular chains break, and so they become soluble in a solvent called developer. Or the molecular chains cross-link, so they become unsoluble in the developer. So if you are able to put a mask containing a pattern that we want to transfer between the X-rays and our material, we are able to transfer the pattern from the mask to the material after the very open with very high precision. And with very high precision, I mean a lateral resolution of 200 nanometers for a thickness of 100 microns. Then, if we put our plastic or our sensitive material on a conductive substrate, we do the lithography, we do the irradiation, the development, we can then grow metal inside the holes of our materials. And then we can read of the original material and we can have a metallic object. We can be used as a final device or as a mold or as electrode for a, a subsequent process. In this case, we get rid of the X-rays and with manual irradiation, we can have many objects. Uh, what we will do today will be the microfabrication of micro gears made of plastic, and in particular of polymethyl metacrylate. To do this, we need an X-ray mask containing the pattern that we want to transfer, which is this one. And then we need the plastic piece that will be mounted on the sample holder. Now I do it. So this is the piece of plastic that we want to have. It is covered on both sides with a thin foil to protect it. And we have first to remove the foil. The important thing is never to touch the center of the plastic with the fingers and always use gloves. It is also important to align our mask with our piece of plastic. In this case it's very easy because the piece of plastic is much bigger than the area that we have to irradiate. Otherwise, we use a ruler to find the exact position of the structures. Then we have to touch our plastic on the substrate and we simply use the Captain Scotch. So I put four scotch because I want the sample as stable as possible during the radiation process. Then we, are, we have to go into contact between the mask and the sample. But we don't want to break the mask because you can see that it is very thin in the back. So we have to guarantee that the mask is not touching the samples. To do so, we put some spacer on the sample holder and then we check if they are put correctly. What I do is just to put the mask on the sample and see if there is a gap. And there is a gap in this case, so it's perfect. So we can go to the beam line and mount the sample. This is the deep X-ray lithography beam line at Eletra, which is the simplest beam line at Eletra because it's just a vacuum tube with three different levels of vacuum, 10 to the minus 9 over there, 10 to the minus 6 here, and in the scanner area we can go from slight vacuum up to uh, room pressure. Here we have also a filter chamber because we usually use white beam, that means all the energies of the X-rays. And if we want to cut the lower part of the X-rays, uh, we can use some feeders and we can select which part to cut. Now I open the scanner. This is the X-ray scanner where the sample and the mask are put. As uh, the uh, X-rays arrive flat, uh, we have to move close the mask 
on the sample and move them up and down in front of the beam to have uniform irradiation. The X-rays give heat to the samples, that's why we need a cooling system. Here we have a water cooling system both for the mask and for the sample. Now I open it to see, to show you how it works. So this goes the mask, here goes the sample that are closed then together. First we have always to mount the mask which is the most delicate. Now it's fixed. Now we mount the sample in the sample holder. To do this we have to fix at least three screws. Then we clean everything, just to be sure. And then we can close the sample on the mask. Now we are ready for the exposure and we close the scanner. Now we can start with the radiation process. As we cannot stay inside, while there are the X-rays, we command everything from outside. And the first thing that we have to do is to evacuate the sample chamber in order to have everything clean. So let's evacuate. So this is the map of the scanner. We have two sensors of temperature. Now we can already see that this one is going down. This is for the low level uh, pressure. When the pressure is very small, this one will start working. So here we have to connect the scanner, which is at uh, 0.2 bar. We will stop it at 0.2 bar with uh, the filter chamber, which is uh, at 10 to the minus 6 bar. And there is only a thin beryllium window of 400 microns. So we have to be sure that uh, the pressure here is enough low before opening the valve that connects the two parts. Okay, now we open the valve, the valve is automatically open, so the, we are, the beam line is open up to the filter chamber. Now we are at a level of vacuum of 2.5, 2.4, to the minus one, so the sample or the sample chamber is clean enough. Therefore, we can go to the following step. First, we break the pumping. And then we put some inert gas inside the scanner. We will put helium, which has a good heat capacity, so it can cool down the scanner while the irradiation is going on. And it's inert, so the X-rays do not do anything to it. So we don't have creation of strange gases. To do this, I flood the helium and then I open the, the bottle. Okay, now the pressure of the helium is enough, so we can open the connection up to the ring. Okay, now we are almost ready to expose. We have to change computer and control system. This is the control of the vacuum, now we control the motor of the scanner. Okay, in this screen there are the parameters of our exposure the sample ca characteristics, and then the most important things are the radiation dose that we calculate before, the sample height, that is how much the scanner must go up and down, the speed of the scanner and its acceleration. In this case, we know that to irradiate 500 microns of polymethylmetacrylate, we need this dose. 
Now that everything is set, it's sufficient that we put start and then we start the exposure. And now it will be open the connection to the ring and now we are irradiating. Okay, now the exposure is finished. You can see because the connection to the ring has been, has been closed because the, the energy dose given to the sample and the scanning passes are uh, all right. So the first thing that we have to do is to put the motor in the load position again. So we can take sample out. Now we move to the other computer because we have to go again. So we close all the valves until the we have the scanner. So first we close separate valve, this one. Then we close VS5. And now we put nitrogen inside the scanner. When the pressure is uh, at uh, room pressure again, we can go in and take out the sample. Now that we are in air again, we can remove the sample from the sample holder. and we can go to the lab for the development process. After the radiation, we had to put the plastic into uh, the uh, developer in order to make the gears come out. I will use this tweezer in order to grip the sample and put it in the chemical bath. So this is our sample. Now we are ready to develop our sample. In our case, for polymethyl metacrylate, we use a solvent which is called GG, which is a composition of many chemical agents. It's a nasty stuff, so we, go, we have to work in, under the hood. Then, this is my sample. I put it in, in the bath, and I turn on the magnetic steerer. Now I will leave it for one hour and a half and the gears will fall into the bath. At the end, I will take out the gears and rinse them in a becker of water. Now that the gears are in water, so they are rinsed by the developer, we can take them out and dry and they are ready. Now we are ready to go to the microscope and see them. These are the final micro gears. You can see that now I'm showing this one, the, it, that it has one millimeter of diameter. You can also see that the walls are very precise and very straight. So the process was working perfectly. These have holes inside, so you can put the magnet and so make micro pumps. This is a, a micro gear in the vertical position. What we will do now is the replica of some microstructure that are these ones. These are made with optical lithography. What we will do is to pour on them a PDMS, which is an elastomer, and that will replicate the structures of uh, the, the, the sample. PDMS is composed of a resin and a curing agent, and they go with one of tenth of the weight of this one. So the first thing that I do is to pour the resin into our container.
Now we get the weight, which is 2.8, and, and then we have to put 0 0.28 grams of this one. To do this, we simply pipette the lipid. Okay, if it is a little more, it is not a problem because the PDMS will be more rigid. Now we can mix them together for five minutes. After mixing, there is the formation of some bubbles in the container. So we want to remove them because we don't want to have defect in the replica of our microstructures. Therefore, we put them under a vacuum bell. We will leave there for five minutes. Now that we have removed the bubbles, we pour the PDMS on our microstructure. Now we wait some minutes that it goes over all the surface. Now we can degas again, putting the it in the vacuum bag. Now we remove the bubbles in order to have the structures completely filled by the plastic. Now that we have degassed the material, we can put it in the oven to cook for one hour, one hour and a half. The temperature is 95 degrees. After that, we have removed our sample from the oven and let it cool down. We have our microstructure with the PDMS above. You can see that now it is dry. Now we have to peel off our plastic from the substrate. To do so, we need gri grippers and a small blade. We take one edge. We raise a little bit. We apply a constant force and we slowly remove the plastic. Now we have the structure and the replica. These are the original structures of the sample that we replicated. They are these ones. There are test structures just to decide if our process went well. So you can see features of different dimensions and different shape. Now we have a look at our replica. So you can already see that the replica was good because the features are the same. This is the same structure as before. It's not easy to see at the microscope because uh, it's transparent, so there are some reflections, but we can say that the replica was fine. Another way to look at microstructure is put a laser on them because these structures are regular and make diffraction.